Do you know it's story time? Story time, story time. Do you know it's story time in our classroom today? And the title of this story is Davy Sand Dollar, a tale of a spiny animal. Written by Suzanne Tate and illustrated by James Melvin. And in this story, we have two vocabulary words. And our first vocabulary word can be found right in our title. Can you say that word with me? Sand dollar. And friends, a sand dollar is a flat burrowing sea urchin. And you can see that it has many spines, little spikes that help it move. Sand dollar. And our second vocabulary word is seabed. Can you say that word with me? Seabed. And seabed is the ocean floor, the sand that's on the bottom of the ocean. Seabed. Now let's begin our story. Davy Sand Dollar. A tale of a spiny animal. Davy Sand Dollar was flat and fuzzy. Tiny purple spines were all over his body. The fuzzy spines helped him in many ways. He used them to move along the sandy seabed where he lived. So the Sand Dollar uses his spikes around his body, its spines to help it move and live in the seabed, the ocean floor. Davy could push the edge of his body into the sandy seabed. It helped him to feed on tiny plants and animals floating by in the water. The spines even had gills among them. Gills helped Davy to breathe. Davy Sand Dollar lived in the seabed with many other sand dollars, mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and cousins. Millions of sand dollars were crowded together. One day, a storm whipped up the water over the sand dollars. The waves were strong. Each sand dollar pushed the edge of its body into the sandy seabed. Davy's sand dollar's body was hefty from living through many storms. He could hold on tight, so he was big, sandy, um, Davy sand dollar. But Dolly sand dollar was one of his young cousins and had a thin body. She was having trouble staying put. What can I do? She cried to Davy. I'm afraid that the waves will wash me away. Your body is so thin, Davy said. You need to turn sideways to slice the waves to cut the waves. That will slow the drag on your body. Oh, I'm glad you told me that, Dolly said. Dolly Sand Dollar did what Davy told her to do. She was able to stay safe in the seabed. The water quieted down at last. All the Sand Dollars wiggled their spines and lifted up their bodies. That was quite a storm, Davy exclaimed. Are you all right? He asked Dolly. I am feeling fine since you told me how to save myself, Dolly replied. But that was scary. Now we can look for food, Davy said. We will use our spines to move across the seabed. Davy and Dolly and all the sand dollars moved along wiggling their spines. Krabby and Nabby saw them coming. Here comes a crowd of sand dollars, Krabby said to Nabby. 
I'd like to grab a sand dollar with my claw, Krabby said. Then I could nibble a quick bite. You'll have to hurry, Nabby said, before the sand dollar see you. Davy Sand Dollar knew danger when he saw Krabby and Nabby. I was grabbed by a crab one time, he told Dolly. Quick, we all need to bury in the sand. Krabby and Nabby saw the sand dollars buried in the sand, in the seabed. A sand dollar isn't very tasty anyway, Krabby said. Let's look for other food. Suddenly, Davy spied another danger. A large fish was swimming near the crowd of sand dollars. The big fish was a sheep's head. It had strong teeth like a sheep and could easily crunch a sand dollar. Uh-oh. Don't move. Davy said to all the sand dollars, we need to stay buried in the seabed. Maybe that big fish won't see us. The big sheep's head never noticed the sand dollars and swam away. We are safe again, Davy said happily. You are really smart, Dolly exclaimed. What would we do without you? One day, Dolly saw a white, bleached-out sand dollar lying on the sandy seabed. Dolly was puzzled. That looks like a sand dollar, but why doesn't, why doesn't it have spines? She asked Davy. Davy's sand dollar was patient. That's what helpful humans call a test. The skeleton of an old sand dollar. It doesn't have spines because it is no longer living. Oh, that's too bad, said Dolly. But it has a pretty flower petal on it. I wish I could have that on my body. You do have a petal, Davy said. It is right there under your spines. Helpful humans think the petal is pretty too. They collect the skeletons of sand dollars and leave the live ones alone. Now let's keep moving so another big fish won't find us, Davy said. We need to look for more food. Then Davy and Dolly Sand Dollar and the whole crowd of sand dollars Mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and cousins moved together across the sandy seabed. So friends, where does a sand dollar live? If you have an idea, let me know. And how did Davy help Dolly? What were some ways that Davy helped Dolly? And how do you think the sand dollars felt when they were in danger? If you have an idea, let me know. And why do you think Krabby and Nabby chose to eat something else? And if you have an idea, let me know. I hope you enjoyed our story. Davy Sand Dollar, a tale of a spiny animal. Till next time, bye friends.